This is Black Woman CEO. Welcome to the only podcast dedicated to giving you the raw and real experiences of successful Black women entrepreneurs. Yes, girl, we're talking about the behind the scenes strategies of what it takes to increase in your profit, power, and purpose. I am your host, Kwanisha Green, and I invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy today's show. Hello, everyone. This is Kwanisha Green, founder of Black Woman CEO. So excited to come to you for our live summit, Maintaining Your Calm and Confidence during crisis. And we have our first guest, an expert, Black Woman CEO expert here today, Trina Parham. Hello, Trina. Hi, Kwanisha. (laughs) I'm so glad that you are joining us. Thank you so much for accepting my invitation. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Yes, I am too. So before I hand it over to Trina, because each of our guests are going to like just teach you their expert knowledge, I wanted to talk about why we're doing this, right? So particularly in times of crisis, it can be hard hitting for entrepreneurs um, and small business owners as of this recording and not to date it because their information is going to be information you can use no matter what's going on. But particularly this was inspired by um, the current pandemic. Um, That's the World Health Organization's words. That's not me (laughs) making it bigger than what it is. Um, The current pandemic of the coronavirus. So many things are uncertain right now. People are being forced to work from home. Whole cities like New York City is shutting down within the next 48 hours. I'm home with my kids. Like, you know, we're, we're on self-quarantine. Some people are being forced to be on quarantine. So there's a lot going on that, you know, makes the question of like, okay, what are we doing in this time? And then how do we survive this, particularly as... um like I said, entrepreneurs and small business owners. But here's the thing, it's not just about making money, right? Um, And how you're gonna sell. It actually is also the other aspects of your life, right? Um, So this is a, a, you can say a summit that's not just for black women CEO. This is really for everybody. But particularly, of course, we have our black women experts that can talk about this from a cultural context and what's going on. So even though some of you are entrepreneurs and small business owners, some of you may be doing that full time like me, right? Some of you may be doing this as a parallel career. So we want to talk to you from a holistic standpoint through the summit. And that's why Trina Parham today is going to talk about three ways to establish healthy boundaries during this crisis, right? Um, And just quickly, we're going to repurpose this as a podcast. But for those of you who are here live, please, as we go along, um, react to the video. You know, you have the hearts and the thumbs up. Leave comments. Let us know what's resonating with you as you're going on. Even now, put one if this is your first time hanging out with us and put CEO sister if you've been here for a while and hanging out in our community. But the more we interact with the video, it allows Facebook (laughs) to send it further out to our platforms and our community. So we have about 14,000 plus women here on the Facebook page. and our Facebook group, we have 5,000 plus. And then everyone who agreed to going or interested in the event. So the more we interact with the video, the further it's reach. And that is how you can help another sister rise. So I'm actually going to hand the reins over (laughs) to Trina and let her um, introduce herself. And I'm actually going to make her a host right now. Okay. So Trina, while we're doing that, do you mind just sharing who you are and what you do? um, And maybe what motivated you to come on, other than my invitation, (laughs) to come on and share these three ways to establish healthy boundaries during crisis? Yes. Yeah, so um, my name is Trina Parham and I teach a program called Boundaries to Bliss. So I really work with women leaders and rising women leaders around creating better boundaries at work. But, you know, the way you do one thing is really the way you do everything. And so right. the boundaries that you need to work on at work, you know, applies to family and friends and, and all different kinds of situations. And so I know specifically for Black women who often are the go-to woman in their lives that people depend on and count on, you know, we, you know, we speak up, we're fiery, all of that. But when it comes to having boundaries, we often, you know, don't keep those boundaries. And then we end up getting sick, you know, not taking care of ourselves. And so I think particularly particularly in a time like this, you know, having boundaries in our lives is really important. Yes. Yes. Everything that she said. (laughs) So I'm going to hand the full reins over to you. What I'm going to do is actually close my video and and leave. So no one sees me. They'll see all of you, but I I will, I will be here. Okay. Uh, Oh, 
Okay. So, Kwanisha, I can't hear you anymore. Yes, I muted myself. Okay. And I want to share my screen. Yeah. So, if you go to the share button below. Yes, I see that. And then you should be able to select uh, your slides or, or whatever you're using there. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. There we go. All right, so let me just put this in presentation mode. Give me one second. Okay, so um, as Kwanisha said and I said, my name is Trina Parham, and today we're talking about three effective ways to establish boundaries during a crisis. So I'm a relationship coach and strategist. Um, I've been doing this work for a really long time, and I'm so glad you all are here and watching, and I'm really excited to be sharing with all of you. So a little bit about me, um, as I mentioned, I'm the creator of the Boundaries to Bliss program, which helps women leaders and rising leaders create better boundaries at work. And so a little bit about me, um, I was a dating and relationship coach for nine years. Um, I have a book published and I'm a speaker. I've done lots of things. Um, my educational background, I'm a social worker by training. And I've been working with women um, and girls also around relationships and boundaries for about 20 years. So this is something I've been doing for a really long time. And I can tell you during my work as a dating and relationship coach, specifically focusing on that, the thing that kept coming up a lot was around boundaries. And so as I was working with clients, you know, over the years, it's something that's always come up that I've always needed to touch on. And so that is what I'm focusing on today. Okay, so to get started, I want to first just work, talk about some definitions so that we're all talking about the same thing. And it's about defining, I want to define boundaries and the word bliss. So boundaries, um, this definition, it's really simple, but it came from Brene Brown. And when I heard it, I really liked it. But she said, boundaries are all about what's okay and what's not okay. So that's letting other people know. So whether it's boundaries with yourself or others or a colleague or a boss or a friend or whomever it is, that it's about um, being clear with yourself and others about what's okay and what's not okay. So what's working for you and what's not really what your limits are. That's what boundaries are. And then bliss is just about happiness and great joy. And so, you know, sometimes I think when it comes to boundaries or when we really need them, we often can lean on things like, um, you know, like self-care. And self-care is really important, don't get me wrong. But the reality is when you have boundaries, you know, things really open up in your life. And so something that you might've been stressed out about before, it might just be not having boundaries in your life that would make things feel a lot better for you. Okay. And then, you know, when you do have boundaries, it does create joy. It creates space. It creates happiness. It just makes you feel so much better. And so that's really what, um, what I encourage my clients to do and what I want um, to share with you. Okay. So who is this really for? Um, this is really for um, who I call the go-to woman. And I think a lot of Black women fall into this category. I know this was me for a really long time. And it's and the go-to woman, she's the kind of woman that everybody turns to for help and support, for money, for a handout, for whatever it is. But when she needs the help and support, she doesn't get it. And I see so many Black women leaders in this situation where they take on a lot of roles, they wear a lot of hats, but when they need help, when they need support, you know, they're not getting it, they don't want to ask for it, you know, and you're kind of putting yourself in this position where you feel like, you know, you're kind of up here, you, you know, you're doing well at work, you're making money, you've got the house, you, you know, all the things that we have, but sometimes you just need that support and it can feel really scary to someone that kind of has it all or likes to control things. Um, to ask for help and to get it. So that's who I'm really talking to today. So why talk about boundaries during a crisis? You know, why is this important? And there's um, a few things that I want to touch on quickly. Um, so the first thing is um, we want to talk about boundaries during a crisis so you can think clearly and make the best decisions for yourself when things are uncertain. So, you know, having boundaries helps you really clear out the clutter in your mind, in your life, so that you can just make the best decisions for yourself. And it helps you, and having boundaries just really helps you focus in on that. 
Um, it's very easy for the go-to woman to get overwhelmed with other people's struggles, um, especially if you're barely keeping yourself above water. Now, I'm not talking just emotionally, but physically or financially, you know, it can be really easy to get overwhelmed with other people's stuff. And particularly with this pandemic and everything that's going around and there's hysteria and there's all kinds of stuff going on in families, depending on you, and you've probably got work and all those sorts of things, you know, it's really important to, if you're barely, if you're kind of struggling to kind of just find your homeostasis and your balance, it can be very easy to get overwhelmed. So that's why we want to talk about this and why it's important. Um, Go-to women are often taught to take care of other people before taking care of herself. So this, again, I think a lot of um, Black women leaders fall into this situation where, you know, you're taught to put other people's needs and take care of other folks before you take care of yourself. And we really want to shift that. It's really important for all of us to do that. Um, the go-to woman often gives to her own detriment. So, you know, if you're the kind of woman that's a go-to woman, you know, you've got a lot of friends and family or, again, like, at work, you know, you pride yourself, and I know I did this for a long time, prided myself on, you know, always having it together and knowing what to do, but oftentimes just giving to my own detriment to the point where it was making me ill, or, you know, I wouldn't have time for myself. And so, you know, we don't want to be in that situation. So it's really important to, to discuss these things. Um, and also feeling like a bad person for doing what's best for you. So again, I think during this pandemic, you know, it's important for us to look out for ourselves and take care of ourselves. And oftentimes for a black woman in particular, I think when we do that, we do what's best for ourselves. Sometimes it might not be best for another person and we can feel bad about that. And there's no need for us to feel bad about that, but it can, it can be hard to make decisions um, when you're in that situation or when you're feeling that way. And the other thing is feeling guilty for saying no. So, you know, this is probably not going to be um, popular, but, you know, we're in a, in a time where a lot of people are going to be struggling and need a lot of help. And, you know, you're going to have to suss out where you want to give that help and support. And sometimes you're going to want to say no, and you should say no. You know, saying yes doesn't necessarily, you know, saying yes to everybody and everything doesn't, is not necessarily the best thing for you. And the reality is, you know, a lot of people are going to struggle and you can't help everybody. So you need to be really discriminating about where you want to give and, and where you don't. And just because you have it doesn't mean that you just keep pouring out and pouring out and pouring out because that makes you feel, you know, really empty and really used. So it's important. Um, so that's another important, um, another important point. Um, you can't take care of or support others if you don't take care of yourself. So I think this is pretty self-explanatory, but you've really got to take good care of yourself and just focusing on, on your needs before you do, you know, putting the oxygen mask on yourself, you know, I think is really critical. Um, and so the, the go-to woman is really good at telling people how she feels expressing emotions. And I think as Black women, this is something that we're really good at, but we often don't set boundaries. So it's like we kind of give and do all these things, but it makes us bitter, it makes us resentful, it makes us angry. I know I was that person for a long time, and because it was, I, it was because I didn't have good boundaries. Um, with family and, and oftentimes with work, you know, just taking more on, feeling like I could just, you know, like a workhorse, just taking on so many things. And I'm like, but I felt, I didn't feel good about it. And I started to feel used after a while. And that's when I realized, you know, I got to make some serious changes. And I think a lot of us, particularly Black women leaders, find ourselves in this situation. And truthfully, you know, you're not a bad person for taking care of your needs first. And I think for a lot of us, that can feel controversial, particularly if, you know, when you have children or you've got family or maybe you have a team that you support, you know, it can be really hard to focus on yourself first, but it doesn't make you a bad person when you decide to do that. Okay. Um, so let's talk about the three effective ways to establish boundaries during a crisis. And, you know, these are, you know, really simple things that I think we can all do. These are things that I practice in my own life and certainly I encourage my clients to. And so I think the, um, that you will find them useful as well. So um, the first way is to make yourself your number one priority. 
And so I think for those of you who are who are moms and in other situations where you know kids need constant tending to, you know, you're you, you can figure out how to do this, but this may be something as simple as having a ritual that you do in the morning. You know, just even the intention of making yourself your number one priority will change everything. So, you know, having time in the morning, having time at night, but whatever it is, whatever decisions you're making, whatever you need to do, that you make yourself your number one priority, that's first. Because, you know, you, you, know, you can't pour out from an empty well. And so once you are giving yourself what you truly need, you're able, you know, other people who you, you know, need and want to support will be able to get what they need. But you've got to start at home first, and that's with you. The second way is be realistic about what you can give and how much you're willing to help and support others. So again, I think for a lot of black women, you know, we find ourselves giving because we feel like we have to, you know, we're often the backbone of our families and communities. And I'm telling you right now, like be realistic about what you want to do. I even encourage you to think about, you know, if it's finances that you're giving and supporting with other people, you know, make some limits, you know, set some boundaries for your own self about how much you're willing to do, how much time you're going to be on the phone with people, how much help you're willing to give. And the reason why is because when you're a go-to woman, you often will suffer from burnout and exhaustion. And so that you don't get to that point, it's really important that you set these limits and boundaries for your own self and for other people as they um, deal and interact with you. Okay. Um, and then thirdly, prioritize and focus on one thing at a time. So I know for a lot of women, you know, we tend to be multitaskers, and I really had to learn, and I've gotten a lot better at this over the years, but to prioritize what needs to be done and focus on one thing at a time. Because the truth is, when you focus on one thing, you know, you're able to move through your list and get things done a lot better and more efficiently. So, you know, if you know you've got five things you've got to do in one day, I mean, I would focus on just that top one and give it everything that you have, get it done, get it out the door, get it done, whatever you have to do, and then move on to the next thing. Because what happens is, you know, we have all these tabs running in our mind and it's hard to keep track. And that really does deplete um, your energy. It depletes your energy. It depletes your inner resources when you're spread so thin. So particularly in a time like this with the pandemic going on and everything that's happening, focus as best you can on one thing at a time. Okay. So that's the, the content that I wanted to present today. Um, I hope you all are finding it useful and helpful. Um, and we'll get to questions in a second. I'm happy to answer anything, um, any questions that you have about uh, what I've just presented. And so my gift to you, um, I created something called the 10 Commandments for Establishing Boundaries During a Crisis. And I want to share that with you. Um, Kwadish, if you could post um, the link in the comments, that would be really great. It's in the comments, y'all. Thank the, you uh, so much. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so the, the 10 commandments for establishing boundaries during a crisis, um, I mean, just some basic things to help you to remind yourself of, I would take it, print it out, maybe post it on your fridge or something like that so that you can remind yourself of these things. And like I said, having boundaries, it's not just for the sake of boundaries, but you know, if you suffer from exhaustion, if you suffer from burnout, if you find yourself checking out, if you find yourself not being able to engage with people, you know, the way to do that is having better boundaries. And when you have really good boundaries, it actually helps you to create more intimacy in your relationships. You want to be there for people. You want to show up. You want to give and interact. And then you can, um, and then that way you can let people give and pour into you as well. So boundaries really are, I mean, they really are a game changer for sure. Thank you so, so much. And let me um, come back on. Here we go. I think I can do it this way. <laughs> Okay, here we are. And okay, let's stop your share. Okay, I think yep. I did. <laughs> so what did you all think about that? That was such useful information. And I love that you talked about the go to women, right? Yeah, the go to yeah. women. Just about, I think everyone in Black Women CEO land, and people were resonating with it. Um, they were like, yeah, that's me. So let me... Um, if you have any questions, put question in capital marks and then put your question, but I'm going to look through um, and see, wait, it says something's being shared. I was like, I see all these screens. Okay, I think it's fine. <laughs> um, so let me just read some of 
Can everyone see us clearly? It looks like the screen's doing something weird. Let me see. Let me just stop. Okay. I think it stopped the share. Sorry that for that weird, um, as far as the video, it was like this multiple like pyramids of stuff. <laughs> I think it was sharing my whole screen. Okay. Someone, um, let's see, someone was writing something. Yeah, so Jessica said the go-to woman, yep, and it's, and it's a self-perpetuating cycle. So hard to ask for help, Tiffany said. Nicole said, feeling resentment. <laughs> uh, Cassandra said, I tell women you have to be selfish with your health to be a benefit to someone else. Um, and Jessica just wrote, Lisa Nichols says she only gives from her overflow. And I'm always challenged by that, mainly because I know it's wise, but seem impossible. And of course, Trina, if you have any remarks to any of these, jump in. I'm just reading yeah. what's here. Well, I, I think that it's important for us, particularly as Black women, to, um, to know that rest and taking care of ourselves, um, it doesn't need to necessarily be in relationship to anybody else. So the, the reality is, yes, we, we have boundaries. We do all these things, you know, so that we, you know, we want to be there for other people, but that doesn't have to be your priority. That doesn't have to be something that it's for. It can just be for you. Mm. And so I think as Black women, we have a hard time saying, this is just for me, just because. It may be no benefit to anybody else. It might not help anybody else, but it's just for you, just because you need it. Mm -hmm. You and matter. so I think that's really, it's really important. You matter. We matter. And having the boundaries really gives you space to rest. It gives you space to think clearly, you know, and get out of that, get out of that, get off that hamster wheel, get out of that exhaustion, get out of that burnout, because then you can fill up. You know, it's hard to fill up when you're always going, don't have boundaries, you know, letting people kind of run roughshod and do whatever they want, running you crazy. It's, it's too much. And so when you start to fill up your own self, boundaries give you the space to do that. I was telling people, whether you're watching the replay or live, tap those hearts. If this is resonating with you, right? And you're yeah. feeling it. Ooh, that was, yes. You matter, everyone. I think that's so important. And we give so much to our communities and our religious organizations and to our loved ones and knowing that all that love and nurturance that you give outwards, you can also and should also, or must also, you know, turn it onto yourself, right? Turn Absolutely. I mean, I, I really believe that the most re rebellious act for a black woman in the 21st century is making herself her number one priority. Mm. Say, say that again for the people that. in the back. Say that again, <laughs> yes. everybody just pause, take a deep breath. The most, the same breath. Go ahead, Gina. <laughs> the most rebellious act for a Black woman in the 21st century is making herself her number one priority. Mm. Because we are so, I mean, I, I won't, we don't have time here, but, you know, I won't dig into the history. <laughs> we got to have come back. <laughs> But, you know, we have historically been the backbone, and then we don't get the kind of support that we give out. So we're always on the front lines. We're always doing the work. We're always, you know, you know, championing and rah-rahing other people's um, causes and all of that. But when it comes to us, we don't get the help support we need. Who's on the front lines for us? Mm. And so I'm telling you, when Black women step away from the wheel well. and just let leave some folks to their own devices, I'm telling you, it is a game changer. And Girl, so again, that's not the thing. You know, in church, and they're yeah. like, <laughs> Got the shout music going. <laughs> <laughs> Stop getting the Holy Ghost going. <laughs> and it's it's true. And I I realize it's hard though. It's hard to to step away. It's hard to see ourselves from a different space. Right. It's hard to say, you know what? I I want to receive and give when I want to, even if people are in a serious situation. Because that's where I know for me. I'm a Pisces. My birthday was just yesterday. I'm emotional, you know, and I'm also a very caring person. So I understand when we want to give and help people, we see people struggling and all of that. And to just step back and let people engage with their own life before getting in, trying to fix it, trying to help, trying to make it better, you know, trying to make sure they're not doing, trying to make sure their rent's paid on time, you know, trying to make sure their kids got picked up when that's not you. Mm. And I think for us as Black women to really thrive and get to the next level, you know, it's important to get out of survival and get to thrive. You know, we can't take care of everybody. And some folks, I'm telling you, they are not going to like it. People, I, I, I'm telling you, boundaries are really important, but it comes with a warning label. Folks aren't going to like it. 
Mm. When you are the go-to woman and you're used to, sh- everyone's used to you showing up every time they call you, you picking up the phone two and three o'clock in the morning. I'm telling you, people get really upset. But yeah. you know what? Let them let them be upset. And that's that's part of what I teach. It's like, how do you learn to hold where you are while you're watching other people, you know, deal with their stuff without trying to be their savior because you're not. Mm. Well, y'all, we got to bring Trina back because as we see, there's more to this. And I love what, that you said um, no, that people aren't going to always like it. That's one of the things I learned when I became an executive, co-executive director and I was having issues with was an older white male social justice. He had been in this field for like 60 years. He's the one that promoted me to co-executive director. I had to advocate for that, but it was so much microaggressions. Mm -hmm. And then my best friend who had been a black woman executive director for a while. And she was like talking to me. I was crying in the car, Gina, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because I was like, I got to establish some boundaries here. And then when I finally did do it and I had to walk back out after I kind of like imposed myself, said what I had to say, and I was like, and he called me like naive and instigating because mm-hmm. around this racial stuff. Anyway, we don't need to go into that. And I was so pissed off that this person called me naive and an instigator of racial discord. I was like, they coming mm-hmm. to me talking about what's wrong. Mm-hmm. And one thing that my friend said, she said, no one's going to applaud you for setting boundaries. She said, no one's going to applaud you. And when we set these boundaries, it also causes that other person to look at their behavior. It may trigger their own stuff, right? Especially someone thinking like, I'm fine. I'm perfect. What are you talking about? You got to tell me. I can't call you at two o'clock. And what do you mean? You're not going to come into work at least hour. So you're not going to take on this project, right? They're not going to applaud you. And I think that's where having a community comes in as well as your own values and confidence and knowing that you're making the right decision for yourself, even if it feels bad and looks ugly in the moment. Absolutely. And you have to remember that you're rubbing up against other people's stuff. So what you just described, so just because you're working on your boundaries doesn't mean the other person's working on theirs. So now when you don't step in or you don't engage or you say no, now they've got to look at whatever they've got going on and they can't depend on you, go to you, have you be this dramatic character in their story the way they think you ought to be Mm. so they've got so now you're forcing them to deal with their stuff that they might not be ready for it and then people push back but that's you know that's not our problem yeah so being comfortable with the process so i dropped the link in here like two or three times i'm gonna drop it again definitely go grab china's um 10 commandments for establishing boundaries during crisis which really gives you the written form of what she shared here today um and trina let me just see quickly um someone said Rhonda said good stuff glad i tuned in thanks trina and quanisha <laughs> ania said they will be okay talking about that exactly, the girl, they will be okay. exactly dr Monica Monica said, preaching today, Wisdom <laughs> Wednesday. Yes. Honey said, true that. Um, I tell people to tap those hearts. And someone said, love the tips. Thank for the link. Tiffany said, good info. Boundaries are so important. Dr. Monica, awesome tips. And Cassandra said, love this. I'm a boundary person, especially when it comes to my own marriage. My mm-hmm. friends tease me because of that. But from what she said, what you shared, Trina, I'm on the right track. I'm in the right track. <laughs> Yes, yes. And once again, um, and this is just to be the last one I read from Jessica, Black women are such culture shifters. Black Mm -hmm. women are such culture shifters. Um, So any last words of how can people stay connected with you or even get your help (laughs) that they may need with setting these boundaries? Absolutely. I mean, you can just inbox me right on Facebook. I'd be happy to to chat with you. Um, You can also email me at just my name, Trina Parham at gmail.com. Yeah, I'd love to connect. Yes. And go and once again, grab the, let me make sure I'm reading it right. The 10 commandments for establishing boundaries during a crisis that will also get you into Trina's community um, where you can stay connected and where she's going to be sharing more insights and tips around this. Like I said, you may have to just bring her back because she was teaching some good, good stuff today. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, we will see you later for the next segment. Um, I believe it's at 2.30, <laughs> if I'm correct. Um, so definitely stay tuned. Um, if you uh, click the notification so that you can actually get the notifications at um, Kwanisha Speaks, which is our really our Black Woman <laughs> CEO Facebook page. And once again, if you're watching the replay, 
please put hashtag replay and also share your insights. And for all of you who are here, let me see some more hearts. Let's big up. Trina, you did such a great job. This is such mm, great thank you, Kwanisha. I appreciate it. And once again, the purpose of this summit is to help you really have the skills to know how to navigate times, you know, crisis times and good or bad or just the complexities, right, of being an entrepreneur, a woman, a Black woman, and a small business owner. So thank you for watching our first segment of maintaining your calm and confidence during a crisis with Trina Parham. And she shared three ways to establish healthy boundaries during a crisis. So go ahead and grab her download and we will see you in a bit. Oh girl, the episode stopped, but the party is not over. I want you to go ahead and subscribe, like, and rate this show. Leave us a comment sharing your takeaways. And when you're done with that, come on over to BlackWomenCEO.com. Join our movement and when you do that you'll get the special invitation to join us in our community well i would love to put a face to that name girl so this is kwanisha signing off and i look forward to seeing you soon peace and love